is the positive here that we're on second round, not first round of the talks, and they are continuing despite the threats from both sides here? I think so, Julia. I mean, this round has started just two weeks after the last one ended. And it started uh, at the beginning of a long holiday weekend for the United States. I have worked on a lot of negotiations in the trade arena and other areas over many years, and I have yet to see another negotiation start on a holiday weekend. So I think that shows real seriousness of purpose on behalf of the United States and Canada and Mexico as well. Mm. Very interesting sign there. Um, I, you know, all the negotiators on each of, for each of the three countries, professionals know what they're doing, have been in similar things like this before. How does the existence of the occasional Trump tweet, when he dashes out something about how upset he is with the Mexicans and the Canadians and may have to walk, you know, threaten to walk away from NAFTA, how does that change the dynamics in the room? Well, it's an odd negotiating tactic because this is an agreement that benefits the United States just as much as it benefits Canada and Mexico. It's a three-way agreement. We had over a trillion dollars in trade last year. One third of all U.S. exports go to Mexico and Canada. So I think people are scratching their heads and hoping that it's just a negotiating tactic. And, you know, if it's not, that's a very serious situation that we'll have to deal with uh, if the time comes that he does move towards a termination process. But at the moment, all three negotiating teams are really focused on trying to work through some very difficult issues, some are easier than others, and seeing whether it's possible to try to do a deal this year. That's certainly the goal, and I think doing a deal quickly would be in everyone's interest, but again, if it's possible. I say that because the longer the negotiation drags on, the more impatient President Trump is likely to get, and thus the threat of termination becomes more serious. We were also looking at Mexican elections next year, uh, presidential elections in the summer, and of course we have congressional elections in the fall here. I'm glad you brought in the Mexican elections too, because I've read a lot about this and the, and the risks surrounding this negotiation, and of course the Mexican wall issue too. And the front runner right now in the election is someone who potentially is seen as a populist, is seen as someone that could ultimately see a flood of Mexicans or more Mexicans crossing the border rather than less. To what extent do you think this is filtering into the negotiating strategy and the tactics of the US officials here? Are they aware of the, the sort of bigger political issues here and the spillover? effects to the United States. I think they are, Julia, and that's one reason why there is this effort now to accelerate the negotiations. I mentioned how it's almost unheard of having a second round within two weeks of uh, the very first round in a trade situation. Uh, they have scheduled already several additional rounds for the remainder of this year. So there's a real effort to get as much as they can get done this year before you have to worry about such a spillover effect.